introduction to art history, then you should know by now you need to leave. I guess you're welcome to stay, but there's a wait list. Um, with that in mind, we will be, um, if you're on the wait list, good, you should be here. Um, what usually happens in the first couple of weeks is people shuffle their classes around as they figure out what classes they need and don't need. Um, and if you don't need chemistry, I'm used to the fact that that's usually the first one people drop um, because chemistry is not easy for, or people have a skewed perception of, of how hard chemistry is anyway. Um, so anyway, um, if you're on the wait list, keep showing up, keep coming to, to labs and classes. Um, and we will get all of that sorted by the end, end of the second week is the last day to drop with no record. So you've got until the end, till next Friday um, to drop and not have it show up as a withdrawal or, or a fail on your transcript. So um, if you're on the fence about whether or not you need this class, talk to me about it, talk to your counselor about it, and make sure you do need that, need this. Um, if you had high school or chemistry in high school, and you're just taking this to get ready for Gen Chem series next year, the year long science engineering major uh, chemistry, then you might not need this class as well. So if you've had chemistry in high school and you're looking to take more science classes next year and talk to me and we'll, just, we'll see whether or not you need to be in this class too, because you might, might be an easy um, five units you can cut out of your schedule and just have to fill out a form next fall um, to get into Chem 101. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get started today. We're going to mostly be talking about syllabus stuff, um, how the class is set up, we do a walkthrough of how the Canvas shell is set up, um, some, some digital tools. Um, we'll, I'm going to, at the very least, point out the window towards where our chemistry lab is going to be. Um, it's not down by the bio lab anymore because all that construction is going on. So make sure everybody knows where to go for labs as well. Um, and we'll start talking a little bit about science and some science histories. Um, and uh, if we have time, we'll get into how you're measuring everything wrong, um, which is unsurprising in science. We have procedures for everything, including using a ruler. Um, so the way you've been using a ruler since grade school is probably not right, uh, at least if you learned it in the United States. So we'll, we'll deal with that and learn how to write down numbers properly. If, if not today, then on Thursday. Yeah. One question. I'm just making a check. Are they doing botany class going to go to the lab now? Okay, so if you're in botany, yeah, you're either the bio lab is still open right now. So if you go out here and down the stairs, um, that's actually the fastest way to get to the, the portable buildings out there, which is where my office is as well. So it's good information for everybody. From here, go right out the door, all the way to the end. There's a stairwell, go down. You stay in the building, that's the bio lab, which is like diagonal right over there. I'm not pointing at you guys over there, sorry. Um, and then, but if you go outside, then it takes you right to the, the portables, which is where pretty much all the science faculty have our offices while they're doing this construction. So I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question earlier. Yeah, no worries. Um, all right, and then a quick note about um, the recording and the, the Zoom that's going on here. Zoom's just the fastest way, best way I've found to record lectures, even though these are primarily in-person lectures. You're supposed to be here in person. Uh, a lot of people really like having recordings um, after the fact to go back to, and rewatch things or if you have to miss for any reason. So I am going to be recording these. Um, it's not set up for the video to be all that great. Basically the video is just gonna be my slides. And then I'll, I'll take notes on this screen um, when we're filling things in. Um, so it's not, not the best option. The best option is to be here right where you are right now. So you can take notes in person, participate. Um, there's a lot of research that shows that walking into a different room than where you're doing other things sort of resets your brain and gets your brain into, into a different mode, especially if the room's set up like a classroom. So being here is always going to be better than, than watching the video after the fact on your laptop. So please try to be here, but I'm not going to take attendance. I'm not going to, you're not going to lose points if, you, if your work schedule changes and you have to miss a lab or you have a sick kid or something like that. Um, it's just you will learn it better if you're here. All right. So with that in mind, the, the recording might not be, it sh should be legible. 
You should be able to hear everything. Captioning should work and everything like that. Um, I'm just gonna, after lectures, I just upload it to YouTube and then put the link on our Canvas shelf. Um, so you should be able to get to that fairly easily. Um, but it's just not, like I said, not as good as being here. So try to be here, but I get that things happen sometimes. Um, and I did grab a couple extra chairs. We do have a wait list, like I said. Um, so we're gonna have to deal with it being a little bit crowded for, for the first couple of weeks at least. Uh, all right, so we'll get go ahead and get going here. I suppose I should introduce myself. Um, I'm Sean, Sean Ryland. I show up on the schedule as Ryland. Um, just call me Sean. No, Mr. Doctor, whatever, none of that. Um, I just want you to be comfortable talking to me, so don't need to worry about any, any of that. Um, and I've been teaching here for, this is 2022, almost 10 years. Um, so I'm still at the beginning of my career, though, so I'm still, lots of things are changing, still excited to learn new ways to, to teach. So if anything I'm doing is not working, or if we're trying anything new for this class, um, that's for whatever reason doesn't work with you for with your schedule or the way you learn, um, please talk to me about it. Um, I'm always willing to change things. Um, you may have heard that, that, that a syllabus is a contract between students and, and instructors. It's not, it's not true legally and it's, it's not true strictly. It's a set of expectations, but those can change. If whatever we're doing is not working for, for a good chunk of the class, we'll change it. So please, uh, let me know. Don't just drop the class. Talk to me before you drop the class. And we'll talk about um, just why. I know that's hard to do, um, but you're not disappointing me. You guys all need to do what's best for you in any given moment. Um, so I just want to know about why, because if it's something easy we can fix, I want to help you fix it. Um, there's no reason that you would have to wait a whole another year to take this class necessarily if it's an easy fix we can do. Um, plus, if you're if you're waiting to try and get a different instructor, the odds are it's still going to be next me next year. So, um, works better if we can address whatever the issue is rather than try and just wait a year and get get Carl instead of me. Um, anyway, uh, that's just a little bit about me. Um, I have an engineering degree and a science degree, so I kind of know both of those worlds. Um, if you have any questions about prereqs you're taking for transfer or programs you want to transfer into. Um, I have a different perspective than the counselors. The counselors know one side of it. I know a different side of it. So please let me know if you have any questions on that front too. Um, and uh, you get to tell me a little bit about yourself when you take the first quiz. And so I, I suppose we can, before we get into how the syllabus is set up, we can wander around the uh, Canvas shell. So everybody knows how to get to Canvas, right? Um, if not, I'll do a real quick version through. They made it kind of hard to get to Canvas now. Um, now it's at the very bottom. You can find the link to Canvas here and you just have to do your login like you're logging into your webmail. Of course, it helps if you get your password right. And if Canvas is up. Always suspicious when it keeps spinning like that. There we go. All right, so as you're probably aware, Canvas takes you first to your dashboard. This is gonna be our course right here. Uh, and I just have it set up on a, on a weekly schedule. So it's, you don't, you're not clicking through modules. You can, from here, you can get to whatever week um, you, we are in. With the current week is always gonna be highlighted in red. Um, but if you need to get to lectures from, from the past, they're all gonna be up here as well. Um, of course, syllabus is right here as well. If you want the, the uh, boilerplate um, and information that we'll go over here today. Um, I pulled, I have a separate file, separate PDF of just the, um, apparently my link is broken there, of just the course schedule. So I'll fix that. But it looks like this. I just pulled off the first page of the syllabus and made it a separate file. If you want to just have your schedule printed out, 
you know, taped next to your computer, or whatever. Um, so this is, you know, a general idea of what we're going to be going going over any given day. So you can go back to this if you want to find out oh, what, what week was it when we talked about when we talked about orbitals. I need to go back and watch that lecture again. This is going to be a, a pretty good way of remembering what we covered when. And if you click in any of the week, week one, week two, if you click on a week that we haven't gotten to yet, I don't allow you to get ahead too much, partly because I'm still setting the schedule. Um, as we get ahead or behind, the lectures will change um, depending on, on the pace we're going at in this, this quarter. So um, if, if you click ahead, oh, actually, I'm not in student view. I should be in student view because then it looks like the way you're used to seeing it. And uh, if you try to click ahead, it'll just give you it's not available yet. It'll open, you know, I think uh, Sunday at midnight. Um, if you have some reason that you need it to be open a day early for whatever reason, you want to read up on things before class or a week starts, just let me know. We can adjust that. Um, but if you go to the current week, you'll have a list of things we're trying to work on. Um, we have extra goals because I want everybody getting used to what, you know, some of the various technology we're going to be using um, and get familiar with the Canvas shell. But usually it's just going to be a list of assignments when we're meeting. And then all of my slides, um, I post them as a PDF ahead of time, sometimes only about 15 minutes before class starts because I'm still tweaking things. Um, so the, but the PDF is available here. Sometimes people have had a lot of success with printing these out ahead of time. So you can take notes right on the PDF or on the slides rather than trying to copy the slides frantically well before I skip to the next one. Um, it's a lot of paper though, um, but the, it's usually my slide decks for a lecture about 20 to 30 slides. Um, but if you print a couple per page, the library will let you print up to 10 pages, I think for free. Um, so you can go in there and you can print off, you know, two per page it should be enough to stand to that 10 page limit and then you could write on there if you want. Um, and it just looks like the same stuff that we that I have on open on my PowerPoint. Um, and then this is where the link to the video, the recording will show up. Um, you have to wait for a little bit because I need, need to finish rendering on zoom and then I have to download it re upload it to YouTube. Um, add the link It takes, you know, an hour and a half or so. Um, of, of time. So it's not usually, I'm not going to promise that the, the recordings are going to be available until the day after at noon. Um, because between, I have a 8 a.m. lecture tomorrow that goes straight into a bunch of other stuff that I have to do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I might not get a chance to look at it um, and put that link up there till the day after. If it's noon the day after and you don't see the recording, shoot me an email. There's a fairly high chance that I just forgot to upload it. Um, and that helps me remember sometimes. Um, and that applies also anytime you think that there's an error, um, please let me know. Like for instance, um, this section right here still said 130 to 320 instead of one to three um, as of this morning, because I corrected it in the syllabus, but I missed it on this page. So thank you to whoever sent me that email. Um, I promise I'll get all your names down as fast as I can. It's just easier once we get into lab. I'll try and get your names when you're in a smaller group. Um, but uh, I appreciate anytime somebody lets me know that I screwed something up or that I have an outdated link or a broken link or something like that. So please don't hesitate to send me a message when if you do find anything like that. Um, and then these textbook sections, these are links to an online textbook. Um, that's that's maintained by uh, UC Davis that has all the information that we absolutely need for this class. I mean, all the links are here. Sometimes the figures linked um, can be a little bit wonky or if there's a better version. So it's a lot of times my slides are better to, to follow along with. And then if you want you know, another way of seeing something explained, um, come to some of these links because sometimes just having it worded a little differently or seeing multiple versions of the same figure is enough to help you sort of trigger some understanding. So you have multiple different options here um, for how you can get this information. Um, and for a couple of the concepts that are particularly tricky, I'll also post links to Khan Academy videos or um, there's, a, there's a really good good uh, YouTube channel I get that's called Professor Dave Explains um, that uh, explains things 
he does chemistry topics really well as well. Um, so for when we get into stuff like quantum, there's some really good visualizations that they have that I can't reproduce by hand on a, on a whiteboard nearly as well as somebody with better video editing experience than I have can put into a video. Um, but so this is going to be, you know, mostly where you're, where you're living on Canvas is going to be your homepage and then the week overviews um, have some random fun chemistry links, um, resources and study tools have some links to some apps that are helpful and some periodic tables. The ones that are biggest at the very top are your safety blankets. These are a, an official equation sheet that I will never ever take away from you on the on the final exam, that will be the version of the equation sheet. So most of it might not make any sense to you yet because we haven't covered the material yet. But I want you to have that, have it printed, get used to where things are as we start adding equations in so that when you get to the, the test, you're not dealing, you know, oh shoot, where's the equation for density? I've totally lost that because I've never seen this before. It's the exact same format it's going to be on on your final exam. Right, so it's a good idea for these to get these two printed out. These are going to be, you know, your Bible, what you're going back to every single time you want to look up a number when you need to look up, you know, a formula or something like that. Um, you're coming to these two PDFs right here. Okay, so um, you don't have to print them off. If you don't have a printer, let me know. I'm happy to print them off for you. Um, if you have a color printer, I have some really nice detailed um, periodic tables that that uh, print out fairly well, especially if you have a laser jet, it gets a little bit hard to read some of these finer details. Um, if you if you have you know an older printer, um, but it, it so it may not print all that well on the on a standard letter sheet, but um, the simple black and white version, that's the one that's our official periodic table that we're going to use on the final exam. Just looks like that. No surprises there, but um, again, I recommend getting used to using this so that you don't get used to having a version of the periodic table that has, you know, electron configuration on it. And then you get to the test and you're using this version that doesn't have that written on it, right? You don't want to get used to using a version that's not what you're going to have when you need it. Right, this has everything you absolutely need. There's just some other details that are nice and you know, color is fun rather, rather than just black and white, but bare bones, that's what you want. See so if there's anything else on here to really go over. Ah, my weekly schedule, see if that link works at least. It thinks it does. Um, well, I'll pull that up. I'll fix these these links in a second. Um, I, let me open this up. I can get to it from Dropbox. That's easier. So this is my weekly schedule. So if you want to know where to find me at any given day, this is where you can find me um, at each specific time. So right now we're sitting right here, one thirty ish, and I got to fix that as well because that's outdated as well. I knew I'd find some more of those. Um, so shift that back half an hour. But when you're if you're looking for me and it's not your normal class time, this is where you can find me. My office hours are listed on here. Um, my office hours are mostly in the morning, but that means I'm usually around for these gaps in between my office hours and my next thing. I'm probably in my office down there or I'm in the lab, which is right by my office. Um, so if you need to find me for any reason in person, this is a good way to do that. If you can't find me, um, if, if I'm not in one of the places that it says I'm supposed to be on here, shoot me an email. It's frequently, I wind up having having meetings get scheduled over my office hours or something like that, or I step out to go um, go talk to somebody else on campus, and I'm around. I'm just not there right now. So, so these are the, these are the hours though where you are are I'm an open book for you. You can come find me any of these office hours. Um, it's extra time one-on-one -on -one if you want it, um, for you to come meet with me, ask me questions, ask me to go over a concept, ask for help on homework, uh, anything like that, right? So anytime you need extra access to me for whatever reason, scheduling issues, anything, um, office hours is where you wanna come. And if you can't make it those times, like I said, shoot me an email, okay? And we'll, we'll make a time that works. Um, you might notice Friday is not on here. 
Um, I'm either generally off campus or scheduled in meetings all the way through on Friday. Um, so I'm, my availability on Friday is touch and go. If I'm around, I'm happy to step out of my meetings. I always would rather be meeting with a student talking about chemistry than talking about you know, curriculum committee or academic senate or anything like that. Um, I'm always happy to have an excuse to step out of a meeting. So just let me know, email me, um, and, uh, and we can set up a time to meet if you need to meet on Friday. Um, and just to reiterate everybody, for, hopefully everybody has seen this, but you only are going to be meeting once a week for lab. So this lab section one is today, lab section two is on Wednesday. You're only meeting with me for one of those. We can only handle about 24 people in our labs. Um, so we split up this big class into two lab sections. So you're all with me for lecture, and then half of you are gonna come, are gonna come straight to lab after this lecture, and the other half of you are gonna come on, on Wednesday. So there's a little bit gonna be a little bit of discrepancy, a little bit of a different experience in terms of you know the, the Wednesday lab will have seen an extra lecture than the Monday lab. Um, but on the other hand, the Monday lab um, usually is um, not quite as crowded and, and is a little bit, uh, will get done with stuff faster sometimes. Um, and really the order that you see the material doesn't really change. One thing that gets people a little bit frustrated, especially for the, the first lab, for Monday's lab, is that is the feeling that, man, I wish we had Wednesday's lecture before I had my lab because I would have understood what I was doing a lot better. Um, what I've found, and this is just my experience, is that it doesn't matter whether you have the lab or the lecture first, it's seeing it two times, not the order that you see it in, that really makes a difference. So if you have the Monday lab, you might feel a little bit more lost during lab procedure, but you're gonna be understand the lecture a lot better on Wednesday. If you have the Wednesday lab, you might feel a lot more lost during lecture, but then it might start making sense after lecture when you get into the lab. Right? So it doesn't really make a difference whether you have the Monday or the Wednesday lab. That's the whole goal with the way we structure the class. Um, it just can be frustrating to feel like, man, if I'd had an extra 15 minutes of lecture before this lab started, I would have really understood it better. That's a normal feeling to have. You would still be frustrated. You would just be frustrated in lecture instead of in the lab. Um, so please don't get too bogged down in that. Um, Anything else here? I think good. And like I said, I'll get these links fixed so that that's working better. I don't know what happened there. I do know what happened there. I deleted those files. I'll have to re-upload those. Anyway, um, any questions about how Canvas is set up? Everybody's familiar with submitting assignments on Canvas? Yeah. Um, so like the textbook, is that just the online one? I used to get it. That's the official textbook. It's following the same, the same order of material as a textbook um, by a guy named McMurray. No, so if you would like a printed version of the textbook, there's, it's called, it's uh, the version, there's several copies in the library. You can check out for the quarter if you're on the textbook lending program. Um, otherwise it looks like, looks the version there's several versions of it the version the edition doesn't really matter but this is the version that we that most closely relates to what we have here um it's an older edition if you get it new you can still get the older editions new but they're expensive um, but you can get used versions for pretty close to nothing um you know 20 bucks or something like that and and it's this is the cover that you're looking for and if you do have, if you are okay studying from digital, if you have a tablet or something that you that you read PDF, can read PDFs on, or however you like to study best, um, there are some digital versions of this around as well. Um, but if you, you know, just bare bones, um, that Libre text um, that that I give the links to is the official textbook. But if you want something that's a little bit more polished, a little bit more like a traditional textbook, um, then, then that McMurray textbook is the one you're looking for. Just be careful that you get the one that says general organic and biological chemistry, because McMurray also writes fundamentals of organic chemistry that is for science second year class for science majors. So you don't want fundamentals of organic chemistry. You want fundamentals of general organic and biological chemistry. 
um, is the intro level chemistry classes. It's um, if you're if you've not ever heard the term these, these three together, especially if you're taking it for like pre nursing or dental hygiene or something like that, they're referred to as GOB chemistry, general organic biological. Um, and it's 100 level. If you get it's not the same as like an upper division biochem class, right? So you want to make sure that you get this version, not the upper division versions. Um, and there's some links that we'll get to in the in the slides here as well that are some some good resources for finding some of those digital copies. Um, the other the last thing about the canvas shell is when you go to submit um, your information or your uh, assignments. So for this class, now that we're back in person, I have no problem with you turning in things on paper generally. This first assignment though, I'm gonna force everybody to turn it in digitally as a PDF specifically, so that if you get in a bind and you need to go, I don't know, go to Southern California and take care of your grandma for a week or something and you need to turn in an assignment while you're gone, you know how to do it. So we're gonna practice this first week. You have to turn it in digitally. It has to be a PDF and I'm happy to walk you through that process. Um, with whatever technology you have available to you. Smartphones, all it really takes usually. Um, but, and generally, if you're turning in a, something and we're in person, I'm totally fine with it being on paper. There are just advantages to it being digital. You can turn it in whenever. I can't lose it. Um, you have a record, a timestamp that shows you turned it in. You get to keep the paper copy if you wanted to study from it, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of benefits to turning it in digitally, but it is an extra step. And sometimes with these labs, they can be you know five or six pages long and that's a pain to scan and, and upload. So I'm gonna be flexible with that, um, but I will require it to be a PDF digitally this first time. The other thing I wanted to discuss, leave student view right now, um, is the homework. So I'm trying something a little bit new with homework this, this um, year. I'm not making homework for any points. It'll show up as an assignment, um, but you don't have to do it. It's in its own category. It's worth zero points. It won't affect your grade whatsoever. The key is freely available. Um, so the homework is totally optional. It's a good idea. It's good practice. One of, the quest one of the things I always get requests for is I wish I had more practice problems of some certain category. Boom, there's your, your homework. It's called homework, not required, highly recommended though. And what you will be graded on is we're gonna have a weekly quiz, right? And so I would recommend do, do your homework, the homework, or at least have an idea, okay, I know how to do all these problems. And then when you take the quiz, quiz is open book, no time limit. It's just due Sunday at midnight of every week. Right, so the, the whole goal of that is basically like extra homework, but it's only a few problems. And I'll actually grade them, give you feedback. Um, and it, the whole point of it is to force you to think about chemistry on the weekend, which is mean, I get it. Um, but the other side, the flip side of that is if you have, if you're meeting with me Monday and Wednesday, and then you don't, you get all your work done on Wednesday afternoon and turn it in and don't think about chemistry for five days straight, you're gonna to be totally lost when you come back on Monday. Right? so the idea with this is to force you, I, and the quiz doesn't open until Thursday. So just by the way it's scheduled, you have to leave chemistry and then come back to chemistry at some point over the weekend, which I know is a scheduling nightmare, it's a real pain but it, I've noticed that it really helps people see at least where they don't get something. And it also allows me to see where you guys do and don't understand. Um, I know. So that, that's the way these are set up. Lab is going to be, I'll have printed copies for you every week in lab. The homework, like I said, is optional and the key is always gonna be available as well, right? So you can check your answers with that. And the quiz is how I assess, how I can tell whether or not you're just copying the, the key or something like that. I don't want, I don't, I don't care if you do the homework or not. I will care that you understand what's in the homework, right? So that's why I have no problem giving you the key, letting you check your answers. I'll work through any problems that you're hung up on. If the key doesn't make sense, ask about it at the beginning of class. I'm happy to just walk through the problem. 
we'll just solve it. And then, you know, if we're still have, a, um, you know, a good chunk of the class wants to do another practice problem, I'll make one up on the fly and keep going. Right. So ask about it. the homework is really a tool for you to see what you understand and don't understand. Right. All right. That's a good chunk of what's on the syllabus. Let me go, let me pull up the syllabus just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yes, let's. Uh, so here's some, some common questions people ask. Ah, well, this was, I did, forgot to take out the Zoom. Um, part, if, I'm not going to subtract points if you're not here. It's, I don't wanna take attendance. You guys are adults, you can make your own decisions. If you've seen some of this material before and you really don't feel like sitting through a two hour lecture on a Monday afternoon, that's your decision as adults. Um, so I'm not going to take attendance. It won't hurt your grade other than attendance is very strongly correlated with test scores, not just for this class, but like they've done, you know, literally thousands of studies looking at attendance versus final grade in the class, even for classes that don't require attendance. It tracks really, really nicely, really strong correlation. If you come to class, you will do better on the final. I guess there, it's correlated. It's not causative, um, which will, you know, I get picky about that. Um, it won't make you do better on the final, but if you can develop some of those better study habits, those will also translate into better scores on the final. It might not be just the attendance, but students who tend class, attend classes do better on the finals kind of across the board, right? So no attendance, but it's not a bad idea to be here. Um, if you need help saving something as a PDF, um, this is the program that I use. There's a lot of different versions of, of smartphone apps that basically use your phone on your, or your phone camera as a um, scanner and allow you to save it as a PDF. If you have a scanner at home, you can use that. Um, however, whatever technology you have access to, we can find a way to help you get everything saved as a PDF because that's you know the industry standard in every industry. When you wanna send somebody a document, you send it as a PDF because that then you don't worry about formatting, getting screwy between different computers or somebody that has office versus doesn't have office. So I'll work with you to help you with that. And again, this, there's a free version of this that's, that keeps bugging you to upgrade and pay money for it. Um, but there's also lots of other free apps. There are, just, there are a couple that are, that are spyware that you want to stay away from. But I think you know, if you need help under, or picking a program, I'm help, happy to help with that if you don't trust yourself to be able to tell the spyware from you know, a legit app. Um, I'm happy to, to help with that too um, because that is something people get hung up on sometimes. Um, what kind of calculators do we need? Well, if there's an online calculator, Google is actually the, probably the best scientific calculator. If you just type in math into Google, math, Google will do the math for you. It interprets it as a math input and will spit it out as, as an answer. So even if you want to do like, you know, exponents, um, if you wanted to you know, say, okay, well, what is 1.57 times 2 to the third, just type it into Google. You have to know what the right keys are. You know, if you wanna do an exponent, use this caret, that's shift six. Um, multiplication is an asterisk, right? So you have to, you might have to learn some of these keys, but Google is a great scientific calculator all on its own. Um, if you want something more in depth, especially if you're taking any calculus classes or anything like that, Wolfram Alpha is a an free online calculator that will even integrate things, take der derivatives, um, will plot functions for you. So y equals, yeah, I don't know, two times x squared minus three x plus one. Just type in a math function in there. It tells you what it interpreted your input as. So make sure that you used all that math, the keyboard jargon properly, and then it plots it for you. If you want to solve the system of equations, Wolfram does that too. You can just type in a bunch of equations and hit solve for X and Wolfram will do that for you. 
Um, so this is a really powerful tool too, especially when it comes to checking your answers. Um, and it's a little bit more user-friendly in that it tells you what you typed in, in math terms so that you can actually see, oh, okay, I put the carrot in the wrong spot or I needed parentheses there. You know, it does fractions, et cetera. So this is a really good resource too. Other than that, there's lots of free scientific calculator apps for your smartphone. Um, I actually recommend getting one that costs like $2, $5. There's a lot in that range. They're still really cheap, but then you don't keep getting bugged to upgrade to the paid version. Um, I find that to be worthwhile. If you're gonna be taking a lot of math classes, it's not a bad idea. Um, to have a, a decent calculator on your phone or just turn your phone sideways. If you have an Android or an Apple phone, usually if you open up the calculator, it gives you the simple calculator. If you turn it sideways, it gives you all your scientific buttons. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. Um, I will allow any scientific calculator on the final exam, including your phones. You just have to put it on, on airplane mode and show me it's on airplane mode. Um, and you know, not be frantically Googling things during the test because that's really, really obvious. It's a really bad idea. Please don't do that. Um, with that said, I'll let you use your phones. Whatever you're going to be using on your homework is what I, I want you to use on the final. On the flip side, don't use something on, on your homework all the time. That's a big problem with Wolfram Alpha or Google. You're not going to have that on the final. So whatever, get used to using whatever tools you're going to have on the final when it's closed book is what I want you to practice using on homework, okay? Uh, other resources, I don't know if we're still doing Chromebook lending, but I think there's, we still have a bunch of Chromebooks that you can sign out at the library if, if you don't have a laptop or anything like that, if you don't need access to a computer, um, talk to the library about the Chromebook lending program. Uh, and you can you can check out a Chromebook for the quarter. Um, tutoring is over in the library too. We'll have we'll set some hours for chemistry tutors um, probably in the next week once we figure what out our tutors hours can be um, because they're mostly students just like you, and so we have to work around their class schedules as well. Um, it'll probably be I want to say Tuesday Thursday afternoons if I'm remembering correctly from a whole two weeks ago, um, I think is what I was talking to Cody about. Our, I think our number one chemistry tutor is gonna be a guy named Cody. Um, and, but most of the math tutors have also taken this chemistry class or a chemistry class and can at least like get you pointed in the right direction, even if they're not confident enough to be able to walk you all the way through a problem. So please use the tutoring center, especially if I'm not around or if you're more comfortable just working in the library, it's a great place to go work through your problems in groups um, because there's almost always going to be somebody there that can help you if you get stuck. Um, discussion boards are not usually that active in my classes because we, you guys wind up discussing everything in person. Um, so I don't typically use discussion boards, but if there's a lot of need, if somebody, if there's um, people that really like working through things through on the Canvas discussion boards, I'm fine setting that up um, and you can you have a Q&A format for that you guys can work through problems. Um, it's just not something that typically gets much use so I don't have it set up right now. All right, so I also have to address digital piracy. There's a lot of sources for physical and digital textbooks. And I, as an instructor, you know, a respected member of the scientific community would definitely never want to advocate for digital piracy or getting PDFs from for free online. That would be awful if something like that happened, if something was to cut into the profit margins of these gigantic conglomerates that put out our textbooks and new versions every couple of years for no reason. So, you know, there's, you definitely want to stay away from any websites like this website right here. Um, that, that promises free PDFs of all sorts of books, especially our textbook. Um, it might seem like it's a totally effective way to get a good, it's a really high quality PDF, um, but it's also free. So don't do that. Definitely don't do that. Definitely don't go to the PDF of the slides that has these links available. 
right? I would never want to advocate for anything like that. So um, don't remember where I was going with that. Don't do that. All right, so a couple of tips. So this is talking a little bit about why the class is set up the way it is. Um, I remember being a student and feeling like classes were definitely not set up for me to succeed in. They were set up to be a barrier, an obstacle that I had to make it through. Probably that's not what my professors intended. That's definitely not what I intend. So I don't want you to feel like I'm setting up a bunch of arbitrary barriers for no reason. If there's a barrier in this class, it's for a reason. And I'm happy to discuss that with you if you wanna know why we have to do it a certain way. Like the PDF thing, I want you to have that in your back pocket if you need it. Like making the quizzes due over the weekend so that you have to think about chemistry over the weekend, right? And so with that in mind, try to, you know, there's plenty of loopholes or ways you can get around some of these things. Try to remember to think about why I might have set it up that way and try to, you know, follow the spirit of the law rather than just the letter um, will we'll help you in the long run. So, like I said, the, and in addition to just making you think about chemistry over the weekend, there's even been really more specific studies that look at um, retention specifically, they did studied a group of people and they made them read a, read a passage and then take a quiz on it and then made them take a quiz again a day later. And then a week after that, they tested whether or not they took the, a different quiz on the same passage. So they tested them right after they read it, the day after they read it and the week after they read it. And then they looked at what happened if they eliminated some of those quizzes. And it turns out that coming back to the material immediately following doesn't really help long-term retention. It's already in your short-term memory. But forcing the students to come back a day later, really 12 hours is the optimum timeline. If you come back to it at 12 hours to a day later, it really return, improves your long-term retention because it's still in your short-term memory, but recalling it again triggers it getting stored into your long-term memory twice. And mem the way memory works is still a little bit fuzzy. Neuroscience is still in its infancy. Um, but what they are able to show is that if you come back to something three to 12 hours after you first hear it, there's a big chance that it's going to be in your brain permanently, or at least a much better chance. Right? So even beyond just like, well, sometime over the weekend, I want you to think about it. You know, I'm trying to keep in mind some of these newer techniques. And so they... Thursday morning is actually a perfect time to take your quiz. because so that's in that 12 hour, 24 hour frame time frame. helps with that long-term retention, better chance that you're gonna be able to remember it for the rest of the quarter, right? So that said, there's nothing wrong with waiting until Sunday if that's when you have your open time to do the quizzes. Um, but I just, I find that, that fascinating and the more we learn about memory and things like that, the more I can incorporate stuff like this into the classes. Here's another tidbit. Happy students learn better, um, which doesn't mean that I'm going to be up here doing stand-up comedy, um, but it does mean that the more you're able to sort of stay in a good mood, and that's it's hard to regulate emotion like that. So I'm not saying you have to be a good mood to be in class. That's the opposite of what I'm trying to say. Um, but the more we can sort of transition into, I'm in my chemistry classroom, I'm in learning mode, and I'm allow yourself to leave all of your other things at the door. So like you're going to a yoga class and you're supposed to leave your stress at the door, right? And just focus on what you're doing right now is really, really helpful for retaining a lot of this information too, right? So try, and I, I know that's not possible. If you've got a sick kid and you're gonna be thinking about, shoot, am I gonna have to miss lab because I have to go pick my kid up? I hope he's feeling better, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the more you can try to like, okay, I'm in chemistry, I'm focused, I'm present for chemistry right now, the better you'll do. Um, and with that in mind, I also, every quiz that you take, you're going to get one or two points every week, just for having a question about science. It can be about anything about science, preferably what related to what we're covering in class. Um, but it can be, you know, What's in snow melt? Why, why do we have some snow melts that are okay to use in Tahoe and some that aren't? It can be, you know, something that you noticed about the way, you know, some video, TikTok video you saw about, you know, a beer freezing if you hit it just right and pull it out of the freezer. 
um, you know, anything science related. And the most interesting and most rele relevant ones, um, we'll actually start every lecture with a couple of random science applications just to sort of help with that. Hey, I'm in chemistry class. Here's some fun chemistry related, get you thinking in chemistry mindset, switch gears. Plus it also allows for, you know, if you're a minute or two late, we're probably not covering anything that's that vital yet um, because we're just sort of doing, you know, chemistry icebreaker. Um, I, and I do tr try my best to answer every chemistry question that, that you ask, especially, especially if it's relevant to the material we're covering. If you ask me a question on the quiz, that's your point blank time to um, not in front of me, not in front of the class, ask a question about any material we've covered or something that I said but didn't elaborate on that you want to know more about, anything like that. Let me know and I'll answer it at least privately, if not talk about it at the beginning of class. Right. And so I do leave comments on your quizzes when I grade them to answer those as well as give some feedback on on what you got right and wrong on the quiz question, the more relevant quiz questions. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is how many of you guys have heard of growth mindset versus fixed mindset? So a few. OK, um, I'm never quite sure whether it's just entered like the academic world enough that everybody, all the instructors heard of this like 15 times by now. So I'm never quite sure whether it's entering real pop culture and or not. Um, fixed mindset versus growth mindset. As fixed mindset is basically the idea that you have certain ideas about yourself and your brain and who you are that don't change. Um, the problem is that that's not really how we learn. Right. And, but a lot of people get it in their head. They think things like, oh, I'm, I can't tell you how many times I've had students say, I'm just bad at math. That's fixed mindset. That's not how brains actually work. Nobody actually is fixed mindset. You might be bad at math right now, you, but you're not permanently bad at math just by some accident of genetics or upbringing. Right? Everybody can get good at every subject if you want to. You might be at a disadvantage based on, you know, bad experiences you had in high school or bad teachers that you had, or just you didn't take any math in high school at all somehow. Um, that might make it harder. You might have to put in extra work now. That doesn't mean that you're permanently stuck being bad at math or bad at chemistry, right? So, um, and it's really cheesy. But what, anytime you have that urge to start a sense of, I'm bad at computers, I'm bad at something, I encourage you to always add yet to the end. Or I'm not good at math yet. I'm bad at math right now. I don't get this math yet. Right? So even that little, little bit, it's like smiling at yourself in the mirror, giving yourself an affirmation. It changes the way you perceive yourself over time. And it'll help you in the long run realize there's not there's no math class out there that you can't do if you're willing to put in the time and effort. Right, so I just want everybody to and I will correct you on that again I know it's really annoying. Um, when you're trying I, I don't get this part right here and I say what you don't get yet yeah, every time I do that you're going to start rolling your eyes to me and I get that. Um, but I'm going to keep doing it and I want you to try and do that yourselves as well essentially get rid of that idea. It just means you haven't gotten there yet. Um, I will also throw some memes in there sometimes. I'll try not to be too out of touch, um, but no guarantees because I am out of touch at this point. Um, my kids are too young to, to be able to start calling me out on being out of touch. So until they hit high school and then I can be relevant again, um, you're gonna have to live with my outdated memes and do the best I can. Um, but they do help remember things. I'll try to make you laugh a little bit, make you, you know, big concepts that I want you to pay attention to. I'll throw something in there that'll make it kind of funny, hopefully. Um, even if it's cringy dad joke funny. <coughs> All right. We'll finish the rest of the syllabus stuff and then we'll uh, take a quick break and we'll start talking about scientific method. So as far as materials, this is all the important stuff in the syllabus. Um, textbook we've talked about, lab manual, I'm gonna provide. You don't need to buy anything for lab, lab manual. I'll make them available as PDFs at the beginning of every week as well. So if you wanna print it out or read it before you come to lab, 
you can go get through lab that much faster. If you come to lab with no idea what you're doing and just sit down and start reading the introduction, then you might be there that whole three hours. But if you show up ready to get into it, if you've done the pre-lab, understand or have read the backgrounds, you'll get through lab a lot faster. And if you're done taking your data in, in an hour, um, instead of three hours, you don't have to stay the other two hours. So you can put in the work ahead of time, read the labs ahead of time, um, but I will also always have printed out stuff and you should be able to finish in time barely um, if you just show up totally oblivious to what's going on and just want to and start reading there. It's doable, it just takes longer and sometimes it'll mean you're stuck, you're gonna be there longer past six o'clock, um, which is, not good for anybody. I start getting fidgety and start wanting to kick you out because six o'clock, I want to go home. Um, uh, you will be working in groups in lab, which are going to be fairly fluid, let you guys pick your own groups for the most part. But for in general, especially with really full labs, I'm not going to let you work on your own. Um, even if you prefer to work on your own, we don't have enough space for everybody to work on your own. We don't have room in there to set up 24 lab apparatuses every lab. We don't have that much glassware sometimes. Um, so you will have to work in groups. Um, and that's pretty standard. That's not just a function of being at a small community college. That's across the board. Science labs, you usually are going to have to work in groups. It's safer to work in groups, for one, because you're less likely to misread something and mix things that aren't supposed to be mixed. You're less likely to, to take data that's useless once you get home and start looking at it. Um, so it's just something you have to deal with and, and working in groups is part of, of taking these. Okay. Um, talk about homework. I mentioned cheating. Please don't cheat. I'm going to make as much as I can. Things will be open book because I get most of the people in this classroom are never going to have a closed book chemistry problem in the real world, right? Most of you are going to be, are either moving into um, you might be taking this to move into a science major or a math major, um, but a lot of you are just taking this as a prereq, right? And if you're trying to be a nurse, the odds that you ever have to solve a stoichiometry problem on, you know, on the hospital floor um, without looking anything up on the internet are next to zero, right? So with that in mind, the closed book part of the test is going to be real basic skills that are transferable, that you will know exactly what they are ahead of time, be able to practice them ahead of time. And they're gonna be mostly pretty quick things. They're not the super in-depth word problems or anything like that aren't gonna be closed book. Word problems are pretty much always gonna be open book. Um, but that doesn't mean you just get to throw them on Chegg and wait for somebody else to answer them for you, All right? So Chegg is the bane of my existence these days. Every single time I write a test, I have to immediately after I give the test, go find all the questions on Chegg request the information from who posted the question, get the information back, open academic dishonesty proceedings with the college, get Chegg to take it down. It's a whole thing. Um, and it, eventually I find all of them because I, were, I write all my own questions. I Google my own the questions so that I can find where they're showing up. Um, and that means sometimes I have to go to a whole lot of trouble to retroactively fail somebody who took the test last year, um, which is really a pain because then it has to change on their transcripts and their current school has to be um, told that they're that they actually failed that class. It's way more trouble for me and for them than it's worth. Odds are, if there's one problem that you need feel like to get it right, you need to put it on check, you're better off just leaving it blank. A C in this class is way better than an F in this class, right? And that's what you're risking by putting stuff on Chegg or cheating, looking stuff up on your phone during the test. Um, you know, there's you using your Apple Watch, all these things that people are doing to try and get around closed book tests or get other people to do the work for them. I'm aware of them. I see them. Please don't do it. It's just not worth it for any of us, right? And the less I have to think about that, the happier I will be and the better everybody's grades will be because happy instructors grade more leniently, generally speaking. Um, I'm more likely to give everybody benefit of the doubt when it comes to partial credit if I'm pretty sure that nobody's cheating, right? So it's in everybody's best interest if nobody cheats. 
a little bit of a prisoner's dilemma situation there. If you've ever taken a philosophy class that talks about that. Um, so just please don't do it. That's all I want to say about it. I don't want to get into it anymore. Um, the section in the top right is probably what most everybody cares the most about in syllabus. At least that's what I always cared about in my syllabi. How are, what's the point breakdown you look like? Where do I need to do good to get an A in this class? Um, this class assignments, meaning mostly your lab reports, but there will be some mandatory homeworks that are graded sprinkled in there, um, depending on the material we're going over. There might be some in-class quizzes um, on a few of these topics that are closed book. Um, that'll be the only time I ever take away your periodic table from you is when we do in a couple of weeks, we'll do a, period, a quiz on the periodic table um, where you don't have to just fill out a blank periodic table. It's basically just, do you know that AU means bold and vice versa? It's just the names and the symbols. That's the only thing you have to, that I'm gonna force you to memorize. Um, and it's mainly just because it works better for everybody if people aren't mixing up, you know, iron and, and iodine when they're writing their formulas, right? So we will do some closed book quizzes occasionally. They'll be in class. Um, they'll go in, in probably into the assignments category. The quizzes category is gonna be those weekly online quizzes, right? And you do get to drop one assignment in one quiz. Um, it's already factored into your Canvas grade. So it's not like, so don't expect your grade to automatically go up at the end of the quarter. It's already being dropped as we, as we start filling in grades, right? So. Um, what you see on Canvas as grades get filled in is already with that lowest grade dropped, which means if you are happy with your grade, you've got a very comfortable A um, the week before the final, you get to skip a lab um, or not turn in the last homework assignment or whatever, whatever it is, you can skip an assignment that way. Um, I would encourage you to not do that at the beginning of the quarter because you don't know what's coming down the pipe, right? You don't know what, why you might have to miss an assignment down the road or that there's one that's really, really a lot more work than the one that you skipped early on. Um, so save that to the very end, reward yourself at the end of the quarter for making it to all of the laps and turning everything in. I, you get to skip one at the end of the quarter, don't do it early on. Um, and with that in, in mind, I do accept late work to some extent. Um, especially since Canvas defaults to everything's due at midnight, right? Is there really a difference between getting something turned in at midnight versus 12.15? No. Um, so I won't, don't need, Canvas will flag that as late. I won't grade it as being late. Basically your real deadline for getting stuff turned in online for assignments is going to be, is it turned in before I sit down to start working in the morning? Which is a moving target, but it's usually somewhere between eight and 10. Right, so if you need, like, man, this quiz took longer than I thought, I didn't get it turned into 115, that's still on time as far as I'm concerned. If you turn it in the next day, that's gonna be a, at least a small deduction. And generally what I do is I take off uh, about a quarter of the, of the grade, 25% uh, of the grade for every lecture that, that it's past due. Um, I usually cap that at half credit. You get half credit if you turn it in more than more than two weeks late. Um, I encourage you to not do that. You can turn every assignment in in the last week of class and get a 50% on all of them. Um, you're not gonna get it all done and you're not gonna wind up passing the class though because you're gonna have a 50% on all of them. Um, so I'm not too harsh when it comes to late, late work, but it's better if you get it done on time. Um, that said, I'd rather you wait, ask me about it, a question that you have, and then turn it in I, and understand what you did, then get it turned in on time, but wrong. And so I try to make those late penalties pretty mild so that you have that opportunity. And I try to make due dates out far enough so that you have at least a week to ask me questions if you get hung up on stuff. All right, questions on syllabus stuff. Um, this is just some op, some strategy, some game theory. Um, if you know you're bad at tests for now, you're not good at tests yet. Um, and the reason I really emphasize that for tests is a lot of people in this class have test anxiety, especially for math and science tests. 
But if you're in this class, you're going to have to get good at tests, because if you're in this class, you're in a field that uses tests to assess how well people do. Whether that's fair or not, that's the current state. And so I don't want to not put tests in and allow you to get through the first two years, learn the material, and then transfer to a school and fail out because I didn't prepare you to take tests. All right, so I'm going to make you take tests, whether you're good at it or not. For now, if you're bad at taking tests at this point, make sure that you have really good scores in those other categories. You can still get a B and get a 55% on the final. Not even just like barely a B. You probably get under a 50% on the final if you turn in all your assignments on time, if you take all those quizzes along the way. Right? Um, if you know you're really, really bad about deadlines, but you're good at taking tests, then one, you're bad at deadlines for now. You can get better. That's a learned skill as well. Um, I'm a procrastinator myself. I know how that feels. Um, but you can still get a B and turn in like everything late, just about. You can get, if you have a 75% in those, in those assignments, and if I'm being real, that's really hard to get that low of a score if you turn in everything. If you turn in everything on time, you're not gonna have a 75% in assignments, right? You'll have at least an 80% in that category. But you can get by, get a B, just by getting doing well on the final. Um, it's not easy though. And it's really kind of puts you into, into a bad spot when it comes to uh, a lot of pressure. Some of you might like that. When you realize, I don't, didn't realize this until I graduated from school and stopped taking tests. I really like taking tests. I was good at taking tests. Um, and so I kind of always like, subconsciously put myself into a bad spot in my grades where I had to do well on the final exam in order to make that A. Um, I don't recommend doing that, but it's possible. Um, in high school, I kind of had this ongoing, my friends and I had an ongoing vet who could get their grade as low as possible, as late into the semester as possible, and still get an A at the end. Um, we stopped playing that game when it got to the point where we all needed to get a 98% on our pre-calc final in order to get an A, um, and only two of us did. So don't do that, but I get where that comes from. Um, you can still make it work. Plan around your strengths, and then work on the other parts. Last thing, um, it's a quote from Robert Heinlein, Starship Troopers is a good sci-fi book. Um, it's a little, a little more hockey for me, but it's still pretty good. Um, but it has some really good gems of quotes in there. Um, best things in life are beyond money. Their price is agony and sweat and devotion. Best things in life are not free. They're the things that you have to earn with something other than money. And grades are in that category. You have to pay just to get into the class, but you earn your grade with your hard work and your sweat. Um, that's how every class is, but especially my chemistry classes tend to be a lot of deadlines, a lot of work, a lot of struggle, a lot of frustration, tears, swearing at me out, out of earshot, hopefully. Um, you will work hard, you will struggle, but you put the effort in, you work with me. I'm not asking anything of you that I don't do myself. So. If you feel like you're putting in a lot of time and effort, remember I am too, and it's there for a reason. I'm not making extra grading for myself for no reason, right? It's because this is the best way to help you guys learn it is through repetition and sweat and agony and devotion, et cetera. Not to scare everybody off. The whole point of this is it's gonna be some work and that's okay. You will appreciate your grade more at the end um, if, you, if it was really hard to get. All right, spending longer on this than I thought. Um, we've already kind of talked about this. Why are some courses only graded by exams? Well, course instructors don't design things to be really hard for students for no reason, right? So sometimes courses are graded only by exams because they want to not have to grade anything along the way or don't want to have to worry about cheating on homework assignments because they're not grading the homework assignments. Only grading a one test at the end is one way to sort of equalize things. It's not the best way, um, but it's one way to do things. But just remember, these are all the things that instructors are supposed to consider when we're designing a class, when we're picking an assignment, when we're setting everything up. 
right? So anytime you think to yourself, geez, why the heck is he doing it this way? Why do I have to do it that way? It's probably one of these reasons. It could just be random pulled over from a way I was taught, and in which case I might just be a blind spot and I don't see it yet. Let me know if you think something's totally unreasonable. And I'll either tell you which of these reasons I'm using or we'll change it, all right? So let's take that break I promised you. And we'll talk about science in uh, 10 minutes. Come back at quarter after. <laughs>